Welcome back to the channel. Bruce do awkward situations. Let's get straight into it. Now, throughout my life, I've experienced plenty of awkward situations. I don't know if I'm like some sort of awkwardness magnet or what, but they tend to happen quite often. And today I'd like to go over three specific awkward situations that uh, were a little bit more awkward than usual, if you will. Now, this first story occurred a long time ago when I was driving home from work one day. I pull up in front of my house, and that's when I notice that there's a neighbor kid in my yard poking a dead squirrel with a wiffle ball bat. What? <laughs> all right, that's awkward as fuck. Now, I really didn't think this was all that weird at first. <laughs> Hell, if anything, I was kind of excited for the kid. I was like, oh, look at that. A kid playing with a dead animal, just like the olden times when I was a child. How neat. So I get out of my car and I yell out to this kid nonchalantly, hey, what you doing over there? Are you making a new friend? Now, this kid looks up at me and all of a sudden just starts wailing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you've ever accidentally made a child cry openly in public, but it's a wildly uncomfortable situation to be in. He runs over to his dad, who's cutting the grass at the time. And side note, I don't really know this kid's dad all that well. I mean, we've been neighbors for years at this point, but uh, well, we've only really had one actual conversation before. And that conversation went something along the lines of uh, me being like, hey there, neighbor, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll probably go fuck myself. How about that? Yeah, pretty well. Right. cuts off his lawnmower, and he says to me, how did he put it? Oh, yeah, that's right. He said, uh, what the fuck did you just say to my kid? Now, at first, I didn't know what to say. I mean, everything what? happened so fast. I thought I'd just ask the kid what he was doing. But judging by his reaction, hell, I might have told him to go fuck himself, and then I was going to go kill his family dog. Uh, I just asked if he was making a new friend. <laughs> was that dead fucking squirrel? Uh, yeah. Well, it's kind of weird when you put it like that. Don't ever talk to my kid again, you fuck fucking pervert what the hell's the matter with you and just like that that was the end of the discussion he went back to cutting his grass i'm labeled as the fucking neighborhood pervert now and for uh. the rest of the years that i live there i'm pretty sure he slandered my ass silly to the rest of the neighborhood hey watch out for this guy you'll fucking try to get your kid to play with dead animals be on the lookout so after that little instance <laughs> hey wait I'm hold on man fuck that little kid bro look at him <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that little kid, man. So after that little instance, I decided I'm just not going to talk to people anymore. To hell with casual conversation. Because one minute you're asking a kid a question, and the next minute you're on a goddamn registry of some sort. It's stupid. But even when I do manage to keep my mouth shut, I still find myself in plenty of awkward situations. Like, for example, not too long ago, I was at Kroger's buying beer. And Kroger's, for those of you that don't know, is a grocery store in the Midwest. You might have, like, an Albertsons where you live, or, like, a Winn-Dixie, or whatever the fuck. What? I haven't seen one of those in forever. Florida people have. But here we have Kroger's, a.k.a. K. Rogers, a.k.a. Kenny Rogers. That's what I call it. So anyways, I'm at the Kenny Rogers with my case of Miller Lite when suddenly my wife calls me up on the phone and she's like, Hey, uh, sorry to make you do this, but I really need you to buy me a box of tampons. And please, for the love of God, don't make this into a shitty little internet cartoon. Now, I know a lot of husbands are embarrassed to buy lady products for their wives. They get all paranoid for whatever reason, like uh, some of them call their ass out like, Oh, sick, look, this dude's buying tampons. Those are for women, you sick fucking pervert. But I don't get embarrassed. That's never been an issue for me. Hell, if anything, I'll hoist that damn box of tampons above my head like it's a fucking Stanley Cup. Attention all of Kenny Rogers. I am a man buying tampons for my bleeding wife. So I'm standing- Yeah, bro. I, I mean, shit, it's your wife. Who, who cares? In line for the cashier, holding my case of Miller Lights and uh, my box of Tampax Pearls. Well, it was right about then that I start thinking about something that I saw on TV a while back. And that something was like an episode of 60 Minutes or some shit, where they were doing a story about teenagers who soak tampons in alcohol, and then they, you know, shove them up their asses to get super drunk. I'm not making this up. This is a real fucking thing I've seen on TV. The news anchor was like, are your kids shoving beer <laughs> tampons up their assholes? More at 11, or whatever the fuck he said. Well, now I start getting a little paranoid because now I look like the goddamn poster child of this new fangled teenage trend. I look back at the dude behind me and he's giving me a look like he Bro, if you're ever in the the aisle or the checkout and you got some weird items, just buy some candy. That's all you gotta do. Fucking seen the same episode of 60 Minutes that I did. Boy, looks like you got quite the night planned out for yourself <laughs> now, don't you? 
So I go to check out, and I can tell that the cashier is totally perplexed at my choice of groceries. He's looking at the tampons and beer, then back at me, and then back at the tampons and beer, and he's trying to figure out what the fuck the correlation is between these two products. Well, now I feel like I have to speak up and try to defend myself to some degree. Uh, look, it's really not what it looks like, okay? Uh, what's not what it looks like? The beer and the tampons. I'm not, like, doing anything weird with them. Uh, why would I think that in the first place? Oh, you know, because, uh, apparently teenagers soak these things in alcohol, and then they shove them up their assholes. Have you guys seen that video of the girl that soaked her tan- You know what? That is not- <laughs> Never mind. <clears throat> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know what? Never mind. Forget everything I said. I have to leave now. And then I promptly ran out of that Kenny Rogers like the building was on fire, and I haven't been back there since. Crikey, that pervert's totally jamming them things up his bum hole. All right, so now all of a sudden I'm the neighborhood pervert and I'm the guy who shoves tampons up my ass. That's quite the reputation I'm building for myself. What can I say? Now, thankfully, this last story has less to do with me and more to do with a couple of friends of ours. Now, these aren't exactly close friends, I would say, at least not close enough for me to not tell this story to the general public, <laughs> but I will change their names in this shitty cartoon to uh, protect their privacy, if you will. So this story begins with me and my wife going on a canoe trip with our friends, Jimothy and Stennifer. <clears throat> And this wasn't a very crazy canoe trip that we took. It was only like four hours or so. You shoot your ass down a river and try not to drown. Then they pick you up in a van and take you back to the parking lot. Nothing awkward about that, what? right? Well, after the trip's over, we're standing there waiting for the shuttle to pick us up. And good old Jimothy over here starts talking about this vacation that they took in Wisconsin. Dude, Wisconsin is badass. There's fucking cheese and there's cows and there's more cheese. Now, I did not give a fuck about this story to begin with because, uh, well, who the hell takes a vacation to Wisconsin in the first place but i try yeah, to be polite i stand there and listen to a story oh well, that's pretty neat wisconsin huh never heard of the place well jimothy decides to pull out his phone to show me this airbnb that they stayed at and this is where things get a little weird <laughs> now you have to understand that all this happened in a matter of seconds so we're gonna have to slow things down and do a little play -by -play. it's gonna be so first, jimothy pulls out his phone he then pulls up his web browser on his web browser was a Google search that I'm assuming Jimothy Googled prior to this canoe trip. And that Google search, of course, was pegging for beginners. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Now, if you're not familiar with what pegging is, well, my ass is not gonna tell you. That's a version of the birds and bees. I'm not trying to fucking have with the general public, all right? Just know that it's a very intimate activity between Jimothy and Jennifer, Stennifer. <clears throat> and I'm sure neither of their asses wanted me to know about it. Well, in the fraction of the second that this all took place, Jimothy's ass abruptly turns off his phone and he's like, you guys wanna talk about something else? Fuck Wisconsin. Canoeing is fun, wasn't it? I love canoeing so much. Now, I don't know how you're supposed to handle a situation such as this, but I just pretended that I didn't see what I saw, even though I totally saw what I didn't <laughs> see. All I can say is that van ride back was extremely awkward and casual conversation was very difficult. Uh, boy, those rapids that we encountered sure were a pain in the ass, weren't they? Uh, you fucking know, <laughs> wouldn't you? Huh? Nothing, nothing. Uh, yeah, at least it was nice and calm on that last peg of the river. <clears throat> Leg of the river. So yeah, there you have it. There's three awkward situations that uh, I really wish- Peggers I can't be choosing. <laughs> <laughs> Three stories had to do with things being inserted into asses, but uh, that's the way it goes. Like Meatloaf said, two out of three ass stories ain't bad. And to Jimothy, if you're out there watching this, which, you know, there's a good chance that you are, I'm sorry I had to slander your ass six ways to Sunday, and I wish you no hard feelings whatsoever. Unless, of course, uh, those hard feelings are in your asshole. Then I wish you all the hard feelings. All of them in the whole wide world. The end. Wait. Has anyone took their friend's phone and just looked at it and something just popped up and <laughs> that shit happened to me one time while I was at the dispo. You know what? Yeah, it, it was bad. It was, it was horrible. I was trying to show my medical card and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. comment down below if you guys had a situation like that with your phone and something bad happening or a picture popping up or a text message. That pegging shit is weird. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey.